Okay, welcome to the lessons on trigonometry. And I really think this is going to be good. Trigonometry is, in my opinion, one of the most interesting branches of mathematics. And it's also one of the most practical and useful. Okay, let's start by just talking about the word and what it means. And you can tell what it means by looking at the different pieces. Tri obviously means three. And then gon, that's the Greek word for angle. So we're talking about three angles. When you're dealing with something with three angles, that's obviously a triangle. So trigonometry deals with triangles. And then the ending here, metri, that's obviously related to our word metric, which means measurement. And that also goes back to the Greek word metron. So we're talking about measurement and triangles. So if you want a definition, you could say that trigonometry is a branch of mathematics that deals with the relationships between the sides and angles of triangles. Because if we're measuring triangles, those are the things we would measure, the sides and the angles. So trigonometry is a branch of mathematics that deals with the relationships between the sides and the angles of triangles. Now I want to start by talking about an old problem that was solved by the philosopher Thales. This picture is the Great Pyramid in Egypt. This is sometimes called the Pyramid of Khufu, named after the Pharaoh, or sometimes called the Pyramid of Giza, named after its location. But this pyramid is huge. In the, in the diagram, it doesn't actually look that big because these people that you see here, these people are in the foreground, so they appear larger because they're closer to the camera. The pyramid is actually much bigger compared to these people than it appears in this picture. To give you an idea, from one corner to another is over 750 feet or 320 meters. And you can see, especially up at the close corner here, you can see that it's made of blocks a lot of blocks. On average, each block is about 5,000 pounds or two and a half tons each block. And there are over two million blocks in that pyramid. So the thing is gigantic. And you can measure this length. You could use a rope or a long tape measure. Or you could measure the length of a lateral edge here. But one thing you can't measure is the height because the pyramid is basically solid stone and so you can't dig down to the bottom and drop a rope or a tape measure to measure the height. So this was a known question for a long time. How tall is the Great Pyramid? Now let's put this in its historical context. If we draw a timeline here, this is 1000 BC back here and the present day up here. And if we divide history up into three broad time periods, the ancient world a long time ago and the modern world up here and the Middle Ages in the middle from roughly four or 500 AD up to 1500 AD or so, uh, Thales was a thinker in the ancient world. Thales was around 600 BC. So let's put him on here. Thales, and he's considered uh, one of the first, uh, one of the first Western thinkers, one of the first Western philosophers. He actually uh, predates Greek civilization, even though he's considered a Greek philosopher. He was one of the early Ionian philosophers, and, um, and he solved this problem with the pyramids. The pyramids, though, I want to tell you, even though they were also part of the ancient world, the pyramids on this timeline would be way over here. The pyramids were built around 2600 BC, so that's a long time ago. So even at Thales' time, they were 2,000 years old. So the, the pyramids are very, very old. Thales traveled to Egypt and saw the pyramids and came to realize that this was a question that people were, were wondering about. How tall is the Great Pyramid? And he solved the problem using the ideas that are shown in a diagram like this. If you imagine rays of sunlight coming in and causing the pyramid to cast a shadow, which you see in the diagram here, and at the same time a ray of sunlight is coming in and causing a person here to cast a shadow. Well those rays of sunlight are parallel and that forms two triangles. We can talk about this triangle here and this triangle here. Now this point in the center of the pyramid here we can't get to that point and we're trying to measure, we're trying to determine this height. And we can't actually get to that point, but we could find the center of one edge and come out from there 
and go a distance out to the edge of the shadow. So even though we can't get to that point, we can make an accurate measurement of that length, the length of the shadow from the, from the tip of the shadow to the center of the pyramid. And in fact, we can measure uh, three of the four uh, distances here. We can measure the, the length of the person's shadow and the height of the person and the length of the pyramid's shadow and then we can't measure the height of the pyramid, but we can solve it. Thales realized that because the incoming rays of light would be parallel, that these two triangles would have the exact same shape. They would be what we call in geometry similar triangles. And so if you're taking notes on the printed page, you can flip over and write down the ratio. Using the variables shown on this page, we can say that, that this height, y, divided by that height, or that length, x, y over x, that ratio would have to be equal to this height here, h, divided by this distance, d. So we can say y over x equals h over d. And if you remember something about similar triangles from geometry, that should make a lot of sense. y over x has to be the same as h over d. That ratio will be the same for both triangles. And then it's pretty easy to measure x and y so we know those numbers and it's pretty easy to measure D so we know that number and then you can simply do the math and solve for H and Thales did that and got it right and uh, allegedly his tour guide and the Pharaoh at the time were both very impressed with his solution to the problem now this idea that this ratio Y over X or the corresponding ratio over here that that ratio would be the same for each triangle that is one of the key concepts in trigonometry. Thales actually made his measurements at a time of day when his height and his shadow were the same length, but he understood that the ratio of the sides was the key concept. You can see that same idea on a diagram like this. A single slanted line can be used to form a lot of different right triangles, but in all of these triangles, this height to this length, that ratio, will be the same as this height to this length, or this height to this length, or this height to this length. That ratio will be the same as long as this angle doesn't change. So if you, if you look at a triangle like this, and let's call this length A and this side B, and let's call this angle down here, we're looking at this angle, and we'll give it a name, we'll call it theta. That's the Greek letter theta. And it's very common to use uh, Greek letters such as alpha or beta or theta to indicate angles. As long as that angle stays the same, this ratio A over B will stay the same. In other words, we could scale this triangle up or down. We could make a really, really small triangle or a really huge triangle. And as long as that angle doesn't change, this ratio A over B will, will be the same for all of those triangles. This ratio A over B depends on the angle, not on the size of the triangle. If we had a, a different triangle with a different angle, something like this. So now here, A over B, and say we have a different angle here. Because this angle is different, now this ratio, A over B, would be different than it was for the other triangle. 